Whether their skin be dark or white, all human persons are equal. One may be superior in knowledge, in wealth, in beauty, but not in being more human. Emilio Asinto, Cartilla ng Katipunan Emilio Asinto was an eloquent and brave young man, known as both the soul and the brain of the Katipunan, and dressed by the fascist revolutionary organization. In his short life, Jacinto helped to lead the fight for the Filipino independence from the Spain. He laid out principle for the new government envisioned by Bonifacio. In the end, however, neither man would survive to see the Spanish overthrow. Not much is known about Emilio Jacinto's early life. We do know that he was born in Manila on December 15, 1875, the son of a prominent merchant. Emilio received a good education and was fluent in both Tagalog and Spanish. He went to the San Juan de la Tran College briefly. Deciding to study law, he transferred to the University of Santo Tomas, where a future president of the Philippines, Manuel Alcazar, was among his classmates. Jacinto was just 19 years old when the news arrived that the Spanish had arrested his hero, Jose Rizal. Governized, the young man left the school and joined with Address Bonifacio and others to form the Katipunan, or highest and most respected society of the children of the country. When the Spanish executed Rizal on trap up charges in December of 1896, the Katipunan railed its followers to war. Emilio Jacinto served as the spokesperson for the Katipunan, as well as handling its finances. Andres Bonifacio was not well educated, so he deferred to his younger comrade on such matters. Jacinto wrote for the official Katipunan newspaper, The Kalayaan. He also penned the official handbook of the movement called the Cartilla ng Katipunan. Despite his young age of just 21, Jacinto became a general in the group's guerrilla army taking an active role in the fight against the Spanish near Manila. Unfortunately, Jacinto's friend and sponsor, Andres Bonifacio, had gotten into a heated rivalry with a Katipunan leader from a wealthy family called Emilio Aguinaldo. Aguinaldo, who led the Magdalo faction of Katipunan, reached an election to have himself named President of the Revolutionary Government. He then had Bonifacio arrested for treason. Aguinaldo ordered the May 10, 1897 execution of Bonifacio and his brother. The self-proclaimed president then approached Emilio Jacinto trying to recruit him to his branch of the organization, but Jacinto refused. Emilio Jacinto lived and fought the Spanish in Magdalena, Laguna. He was seriously injured in a battle at the Maimpis River in February of 1898, but found refuge in the Santa Maria Magdalena Parish Church, which now boasts a marker noting the event. Although he survived this one, the young revolutionary would not live for much longer. He died on April 16, 1898, of malaria. General Emilio Jacinto was just 23 years old. His life was marked with tragedy and loss, but Emilio Jacinto's enlightened ideas helped to shape the Philippine Revolution. His eloquent words and humanist touch served as a counterbalance to the blunt ruthlessness of revolutionaries such as Emilio Aguinaldo, who would go on to become the first president of the new Republic of the Philippines. His major works are Cartilla ng Katipunan, Liwanag at Dilim, Ami Madre, and Ala Patria. First, Cartilla ng Katipunan, a primer book on the Katipunan and it is all about order to the members of the congregation. Second, Liwanag at Dilim, Light and Darkness, a collection of essays on different subjects like freedom, work, faith, government, and love of country. Third, Ami Madre, To My Mother, Attaching ode to his mother and expressing grief without the mother. Fourth, Ala Patria, to my country. Poem by Jacinto for Spanish and recognized as his masterpiece. Written on October 8, 1897.